What is up my fellow golf ball addicts? Welcome back to the channel. We are continuing the Bridgestone 2024 lineup. We are now doing the Tour BRX, the distance model for under 105 mile an hour. Let's dive right in. All right, so we already, this is our second out of the Bridgestone lineup. We just got done doing the RXS, which of course is the more spinning model, more feel spinning model for under 105. And actually it did really well. Um, you know, in the past I've tested Bridgestone balls, not really been super impressed with them. Not that they're bad, but they're just not great. You know, they don't stand out from the crowd like others do. Uh, but this was different. There was a lot of improvements made. The feel was phenomenal. Five out of five feel. Um, you know, the ball didn't spin maybe as much as I would like, and maybe it didn't rip off the club as much as I'd like, you know, there was a little bit of room for distance, but overall it was a solid 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 performance. I really enjoyed it and it is definitely one of the better tour balls I've tested. So now we move on to the distance model of that, which basically, you know, I don't know what the difference is, what the disparity is going to be between the two, but we are going to be using this review kind of as a direct comparison to the RXS because it's supposed to be the spinninger model. This one's supposed to be the more distance model. And so I do want to know how big is that line? You know, is it this one's 10 yards further, but you get zero spin? And, you know, is the other one 1,000 RPMs more, but you get less, you know, I want to know, like, how big is that disparity line? And so we're going to find out. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into the price point. Like I mentioned before, these are $49.99 a dozen. And, you know, for a tour golf ball, that may be on the cheaper side. But as far as, you know, just in the grand scheme of golf balls, it's, it sucks. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of people on here do not want to spend $50 for a dozen of golf balls. And with great models like Legato, Wright & Ditson, Vice, you know, at $29.99, $34.99 for a dozen, it makes sense. You know what I mean? I know this is still one of the AAA players, but um, it, it just doesn't give it any value points because it, it's still expensive. That's a lot of money for golf balls. Let's go ahead and dive into the design. As I said before, I really like the Bridgestone B. It's iconic. I do think of a tire, though, when I when I see it. But hey, that's just it comes with the territory. This one, as you can see, has the red number, which as of before in the last video, I indicated the blue ones are usually their spinning models. The red ones are their distance models. So that makes sense there. Then you flip over on the side here, and I'm not a huge fan of this alignment tool. Um, it just doesn't look uh, very good, and uh, frankly, it's not the design that bothers me. It's just the, the smallness of it. You know, up here, if you're looking over your ball, you just can't see it very well, and even when I was out there testing it on the putting green, this doesn't work. But Bridgestone has come out this year with this mindset model. I'll show it there. Um, and this is kind of something new. You know, I touched on it in the last video, but essentially this isn't even really an alignment tool. I know it kind of is. They want you to line your ball up with the arrow pointing, you know, like when you're putting. I don't, I don't think it works great for that, but what I do like is that it does kind of get you in the right mindset. This is really good for intermediate and beginner golfers, and, and some advanced as well, who just need to get their focus on the shot. And sometimes we all struggle with that. You know, this is designed, you put it down, you look at the red, hey, that's step one, you know, find your target. Where are you trying to hit the ball? Two is the yellow line, which of course is, you know, imagine the shot, imagine the ball going to that, and then focus on the green, which is focus on the ball. So makes sense. That is something everyone should be doing. I struggle at times with that, so it's really good, but it doesn't actually do anything for the alignment tool. But it's an interesting design. I like it. Uh, it did spark a couple other videos that are going to be coming out soon, like some tip videos, so that'll be neat. Overall, it's an interesting design, and Bridgestone does have this dimple pattern that is different, unique. Uh, the holes are a little wider, and they're more stamped in, opposed to like curving in like a pond. Not a big fan of that. We actually discovered in the last video that it actually affected the durability, so we'll check that on this one too, but because of that dimple pattern, um, it, it actually made the durability a little worse because that outer part ended up really yellow. So let's go ahead and go out to the chipping and putting green, and let's see how it does around there. Not bad. Uh, it wasn't a pure hit. I kind of hit it off the bottom a little bit, but let's see if we can get a better one. So one thing I really like that Bridgestone has done here is that all their golf balls pretty much feel the same around chipping with the green. You know, I can't speak for full shots. I'm sure they're all different when it comes to that. But as far as around the green, chipping it, short chips, they all have this really buttery, soft feel. Um, you know, they just seem to click, you know, a certain amount. It's not a heavy click, but it's just enough to let you know for feedback. And it doesn't matter which ball you get. So they've really provided a lot of consistency, and I like that a lot. All these names really confuse me, but the point is, is the ones that are designed to spin more are spinning more, and the ones for distance are spinning just a little less, but they're actually spinning a pretty ample amount. So let's go ahead and try to get one of these to go left. 
No, that's the first one I've had no left spin on. So just keep that in mind. I've had left spin with every other Bridgestone ball. I'm sorry if this ends up being the first one. Sorry to spoil it for you. But no left spin at all. So this is probably the least spinning model out of the four. But let's validate that with a nice, thick, nasty cut. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely for sure. That was a really good strike when it came to a cut. I know I pulled it a little bit. I tend to do that on my nasty cuts. But as far as the spin, it's just not as much as its counterparts that I just tested. I won't talk too much about the mindset because I did that in a different Bridgestone video, but long story short, um, if you've watched all the Bridgestones, or if you haven't, you can go check it out. Basically, long story short, I don't consider this an alignment tool. You know, this is designed to get your mind in, in golf. You know what I mean? Some of us get distracted and when you get tired, this is designed to, hey, focus on your target, focus on the line to the target and focus on the ball and focus on your shot. And I think it does a great job at that, but it's not, it's not really a, a, a alignment tool per se. So I think they're in different categories. So really what I'm gonna do is just kind of get a feel for this and see how it... Oh, very nice. Beautiful, crispy, buttery, smooth. Try this other one here. Get in there really nice again ball has a really nice roll really good roll really consistent all right so that was with the uh, mallet putter mallet putters usually feel a little deader heavier now we got the old traditional blade putter sorry guys love bugs are in full season here in florida so sorry about that but yeah so i'm really excited to see i mean so far so good with this one i definitely like it than that last bridgestone i did which was the xs but let's validate the parking oh baby come on crispy not dead coming off like the XS was, really soft, really crispy, um, really good roll, love the sound, love the feel, uh, whole other ball game here. That's too hard, that's way too hard, but the line was good. It, it actually has a lot of spring to it, but there's no chug effect. I mean, it really springs off the club really well, but it doesn't chug, it's just a nice consistent roll, which is what I would expect from a golf ball like this. Okay, so let's talk about the feel as far as with every golf club. Now, the last one, the RXS, I talked about how it was just soft, buttery, I mean, so forgiving. Um, I mean, it was just, it, it, it was almost perfect. You know what I mean? It just really was. It was very, very, very perfect. I mean, it was, it was a five out of five. I gave it a perfect score. The feel and sound was amazing. I wondered if this one was gonna be the same, and it's very close. What do I mean by very close? Well, it's not the same. It's not quite as soft. It's maybe one step further. So if the other one was like a 10 out of 10 soft, this one's a nine out of 10 soft or an eight out of 10 soft, a little more toward the firmer side. Now not firmer like, oh, there's a click now. I mean, literally like, like here's the bar, this is firm, this is soft. Here are these two golf balls. Like it's, it's they're right next to each other. Um, I love how it feels. It's still a five out of five. The forgiveness is still incredible. Um, what I really like about this golf ball that sets it apart from its, its, you know, brother essentially is that this one has a little bit different of a sound and it's a very addicting sound when you hit it. When you hit it pure, it, it kind of reminds me, the best way I can describe it to you is if, if you told me you're making a golf ball, a golf movie and like you said, hey, when they're hitting golf shots, I need a sound effect, you know, like the perfect golf shot, like how it's going to sound. That's what I would build. That's what it reminded me of. It was almost like watching a movie or seeing it on TV, like listening to that, really incredible stuff. Um, again, I would say five out of five on sound, five out of five on feel. Bridgestone has outdone themselves with the feel, sound, forgiveness, everything of these golf balls. It kind of, I mean, you know, I always hold tour balls to a really high standard because they cost so much. So I always, you know, kind of, I'm a little bit nitpicky. This is what I'm talking about when I say I'm nitpicky. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for, is the, the devil's in the details, and that's what I'm looking for when you're charging me $50 a dozen. Bridgestone, really great job, seriously. Um, so let's get into these numbers. Let's see how they are. Remember, this is the distance model. It's not supposed to have as much spin. The way you're going to see this is you're going to see the number on the left, which is this ball, the one we're testing, the RX. There'll be a slash, and then on the right, there will be the Tor BX. Uh, RXS, excuse me, which is a spinninger model, and that way we can kind of do a comparison here. So let's start with the 50-yard pitch. Uh, looking at the backspin RPM, 7,249, whereas the RXS got 7,451. So that actually keeps it very, very close. Now I will say that between the two, I noticed a little bit more consistency with the other one, whereas 
you know, 7,500, 7,400, 7,800, oh, I miss hit 16,500 RPM. This one was a little different. You know, I, I take out five or six of the worst shots. I usually hit 15, I'll get it down to 10. There was a couple 3,000 RPM, 4,000 RPM. So this one doesn't quite have the forgiveness on spin. You miss hit this one a little bit and instead of checking up by the, the hole, it might actually roll to the back a little bit. Whereas the other one, I didn't have that experience. But those numbers are very close. This one does have less spin. So, so far it is doing as advertised. So let's go ahead and get into the nine iron now. We're looking at 1.33 on your smash factor, which the, uh, the other ball was 1.35. So actually a little bit better on the other model. Uh, 139.5 compared to 142.9. So lost a little bit there. 140.6, 143.9, lost a little bit. 104.1, 106.3, uh, 6262 and 6134. Again, less spin like it's supposed to, but I also lost different distance. So we'll talk about that. And then 20.3 compared to 19.8, they launched pretty close. Um, you know, the, the, the takeaway from that is that... Um, it's a little disappointing because, again, I'm supposed to be getting more distance with this ball. But what I will say is really what that comes to is forgiveness. This golf ball still is a really forgiving golf ball. But it's not quite that 5 out of 5 forgiveness that the RXS was. It's like a 4 out of 5. And the difference between that was that on a couple miss hits, instead of only losing 5 yards, I lost 10. Still not bad. But now you can see that three yard difference. That's why the average out, it just wasn't as much. The same thing with the ball speed. So they're very close. You know, if I had to give you an honest opinion, I would say that when it comes to the nine iron, you probably wouldn't notice a difference other than the sound and the feel a little bit. If you put a blindfold on, you might not even notice at all. You might, it might, might, might be like the Pepsi challenge. You might actually get it wrong once or twice. So um, interesting there. Let's dive into the seven here and keep it going. We have a smash factor of 1.38 compared to 1.39, uh, 165.9 over 164, 168.3 over 166. So I gained distance with this ball finally, that's good. 117.5 compared to 116.7, again, really good. Uh, 5,332 compared to 5,472. Again, I mean, I know these margins are really, really small, but yes, I did technically get less spin with it. And then 14.8 compared to 15.1. Again, you know, it's, it's still doing as advertised, but boy, this is really, really close. And I almost wonder if that has a little bit to do with the fact that my swing speed now is around like 97 mile an hour with the driver, opposed to it used to be 93. You know, this is for under 105. We're getting close to that threshold. I think with this ball in particular, the driver was like 101 mile an hour. I was really ripping it. I was trying because I was getting some good numbers. But I, I do think that we're because we're closer to that line, I just don't think we're seeing a lot of difference between these golf balls. I think they're actually performing quite the same. It actually could be a little bit of an overcompression issue. Not much. I mean, we're talking bare minimum. We're talking basically overcompressing the last 5% of it just to kind of where there's no uniqueness anymore to either golf ball. You don't see that drastic spin difference or that drastic distance number because of that. We'll know more when we text, test the other two models, excuse me, but for now, this is kind of what we have to work with. They're very, very, very close. Uh, getting into the five hybrid now, this is a chance for the ball to really shine. 1.43 for both, 188.8 compared to 191.9, so I lost distance. 193 compared to 197.9. Uh, 128.7 compared to 128.9, and then 4,602 compared to 3,863, and 13.1 compared to 12.9. So, okay, so the reason I lost the distance was because the ball spun more, and now here's where we get into a discrepancy like this. Now you got to start looking at the balls and saying, okay, whose fault is this? Is this the RXS's fault? Is it not spinning enough? Is it this one? You know, it's it's tough because the, the golf balls are so close in comparison. I'll touch more on it in my um, con conclusion and thoughts. But for now, that's pretty significant. I mean, I, I look to get around the 4,500 to 5,000 mark with my hybrid. That's like really good because I can stick a green. The fact that I got it with the non-spinning model and I got such a terrible number with the spinning model, it's a little concerning. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but let's keep diving in. Let's go to the driver. We have one more to do. 1.44 compared to 1.43, 229.5 compared to 222.3, 
Uh, 240.7. Hey, it's been a while since I hit 240. Nice. 233.6, 145.6 on your ball speed, which is phenomenal. Zoom, baby. 141.4, so I gained 4 mile per hour, uh, and then 2,354 compared to 2,267. So that kind of tells me what I need to know right there uh, at the end, and then 12 compared to 13.3. Boy, this ball did want to launch low. Um, you know, again, kind of similar things here. I got more spin with the non-spinning ball, but I, I'm pretty sure I know why. We'll touch on it in a second. Let's go ahead and get into the durability before I give you my closing thoughts. I will say that it is better than the last one. That's actually hilarious. I just now looked and I see a crack in it. I actually had done a once over with this and was really feeling it and was focusing more on the feel. But now I'm looking right at it dead and it has a crack in it, but this is after a hundred shots. So I'll, I'll just give it a 7 out of 10 like I gave the last one. I was originally going to give it an 8 out of 10, but now that I see the, the small, very hairline crack there, after 100 shots, it's only going to last you about a round, which 7 out of 10, not bad, but again, $50 a dozen, is it, is it wrong of me to expect it to last a little more than a round for the average golfer, for, you know, a, a weekend guy, opposed to a, I know a tour pro is going to change it out after every few holes, but I mean, as far as durability wise, I just, I just think it should last more than a round, because again, some of those $29.99 golf balls are and they're half the price so i don't know just something to think about but overall not bad so in closing thoughts you know i'm still impressed with bridgestone they still have made a lot of great strides are they quite worth the 50 dollars a dozen yet i don't know but let's talk about for a second who these specific golf balls are for i do recommend them if you're a tour ball player and you don't care about price and you want to try them um, both of these golf ball the models the rxs and the rx both feel phenomenal. They both have an amazing feel, an amazing sound. Uh, they're, they're a joy around the green. They're fun to putt with. Um, they're a very fun ball to use overall. Um, I like the design, the mindset. It's unique. It's different. Um, a lot of people really gravitate toward Bridgestone balls. And let's be honest, the GOAT himself does play them and he picked them for a reason. He could have picked anybody. When it comes to this golf ball compared, like which one's for you, okay? If you notice the driver numbers, I really started to over compress them once I got to the driver with the RXS, the spinning model. And you could see that. I'll pull this up here again to show you. These are the driver numbers. And when you look at a seven yard gain in distance, a four mile per hour gain in uh, ball speed, even the spin number being a little wonky and looking at that, you can tell that I'm basically at that point starting to over compress the golf ball and I'm just not getting a lot out of it. These golf balls were tested 12 hours apart. You know what I mean? Like they were tested very close. Um, and so my swing is maybe a little different. All of ours usually are, but that's pretty close. I mean, that, that's pretty good as far as, you know, how close two reviews can be to one another. So here's what I'll say. If you are in the 95 mile an hour to 105 mile an hour range, um, let's just even say like 90 to 100, somewhere in there. I think the RX is going to be for you because it still feels really good. It still sounds really good. And you might say, oh, well, no, I need more spin there wasn't a lot of spin difference. I mean, between this one and the other one, 200 RPM, 100 RPM, 100 RPM, 50 RPM, like it, it's so, so close that you're just not going to notice that. 200 RPM is not the difference between, you know, a ball being by the hole and being at the back of the green. It's the difference between a golf ball being, you know, by the hole and maybe like a yard in front of that. Like it's just, it's very close. You're not going to notice it overall. Um, I think this golf ball will compress better. I think you'll get more distance off the driver with it. I think that's the way to go. Now, if you're below 90 mile per hour, say you're like a senior, but you used to be really good and you're still good, but you just don't have the swing speed to match it anymore. Now, I think you get into that RXS line. I think you get into it because it's extremely soft. It's extremely forgiving. You're going to be able to compress it even with an 85 mile an hour swing speed, which is awesome. And I think you'll get fantastic numbers with it. So that would be my recommendation. I think if you're anywhere in the 90s at all, I don't see really much of a need to go to the RXS. This golf ball pretty much does everything the RXS does, except has a little bit better of a sound in my opinion. And uh, maybe it doesn't have quite the forgiveness, but I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs. And then also, we're, I mean, the driver distance is alone enough. Like, just for me, I mean, if you're telling me I can get an extra seven yards out of this bad boy, okay, there you go, sold. So that, that would be my opinion. Guys, as always, keep watching and keep saving and keep learning. Now we will test the over 105 models. And since I'm actually a lot closer to that now, I'm interested to see how they does. I'll see you soon.